now from the makers of Cold Water Omo. In the apartment of Charles Minot, Colonel Mannering, dressed in his customary black, brought his riding crop down lightly on Minot's shoulder. Expecting someone, Minot? No, Colonel. I, I promise you I'm expecting no one. Better answer it. We're leaving. Now. Very well. Minnow moved swiftly to the intercom switch, connected to the front door. Yes, who is it? Charles Minnow, this is Emma Peel. I'd like to see you right away. So you've just got out of the bath and haven't dressed. Uh, oh, Mrs. Peel, uh, I'm afraid you've caught me undressed. I've, uh, I've just got out of the bath. Can you give me a few minutes? I'll wait. Uh, right, uh, be down as soon as I can. Come along then, Minnow. Let's get moving. The back service stairs. All right. Uh, oh, just a minute. What is it? I almost forgot something. My toothbrush. The Avengers. John Steed and Emma Peel, The Avengers. Episode 3 of this story, in which John Steed and Emma Peel rush about getting nowhere fast, and Mother has his own way of conducting a case of interrogation. Two men were dead. Two linked men who were very valuable to the Ministry in passing on bought information. Mother was worried. The leakage of information which resulted in the two deaths could only have come from the young army lieutenant, Roy Casper. At first, John Steed had thought Casper had also been killed, but he'd been picked up at the Green Pheasant pub, innocently going to keep an appointment. Back at Mother's headquarters, they'd failed to get an explanation from him. In an effort to break the story that he'd just taken a few days off, Steed sent Mrs. Peel to pick up Charles Minnow, one of Casper's best friends. But Minnow was being picked up first. The interrogation of Casper would have to take place without his help. Right. Come along then, Casper. Let's go through it again. Again, I've told you everything I can. I just took a couple of days off. I, I went, went on a tour. Yes, but I wanted in detail. From the beginning, every detail, every minute of the journey, every nuance of your unofficial holiday. Now... You decided to take a few days off. Yes. You drove away from your home on your own. Yes. And your first stop was Salisbury. You stayed at the public house? What pub? I don't know. I, f I forgot. Oh, for pity's sake. Can't you see I'm tired? Tired of questions. Always questions. The past few days I've had enough. Yes, Casper, the past few days. What? You had enough questions? The past few days are what we are interested in, Casper. Questions from whom, Casper? Concerning what? Look, what's this all about, anyway? You've been interrogating me for hours now, and you won't tell me what it's all about. You try to make me drunk, you won't let me go home. I've got a right to know what this means, haven't I? A right? Yes, I suppose you have. <laughs> all right, Steed, show him. Silently, John Steed moved to the door, opened it, and wheeled in another bath chair similar to that in which Mother sat. The chair was covered with a white cloth. Steed took the edge. Does this answer your question? As he spoke, he whipped the cloth away. The body of Izzy Pound, with some of his musical instruments still attached to his clothing, fell to the floor. Izzy Pound? It's... It's a trick. Take his wrist. Take it. Feel his flesh. That's dead flesh. But... but nobody knew about him. N nobody except me and you, Casper. Me and you. You can't think. You think I... Casper, you were missing for three days. Now, where were you? <laughs> I, I can't tell you. you. Can't? Someone got some sort of hold over you, is that it? They're, they're holding a friend or a relative hostage. No, no, nothing like that. 
I, I can't tell you. Not yet. Give me time to think, please. Please. Steed looked at Mother. Mother gave a hardly perceptible nod. Very well, Casper. Take all the time you want. You sleep on it. Come back and see us tomorrow and we'll talk about it then. T tomorrow? That's right. Or the day after. No hurry. I, I can, can, can go home? That's right, Casper. Good night. Good night. Steed and Mother smiled as the bewildered and exhausted young man left them. After he'd gone, it's the best way. Oh, definitely. I might have remained here all night waiting for him to crack. As you say, he's been got at by someone. He turned up at the Green Pheasant to meet Pound, and he was genuinely shocked at seeing the body. Give him a few minutes to start. I'd say about now. Yes, I'll get after him. He's frightened, all right, and he'll lead us straight to them. <laughs> Emma Peel, outside Minnow's apartment, got impatient. She took a small vanity case out of her handbag and snapped it open. Inside was a variety of gadgets, all suitable for picking the locks of doors. A few minutes later, she was inside, climbed the stairs, and broke into Minnow's rooms. It only took a moment to realize what had happened. She phoned Mother. Mother? Uh, mother speaking. What news, Mrs. Peel? I'm at Minnow's place, and I don't like it. You mean the color of the walls? Or the furniture, not to your taste. I mean, I don't like the situation. Minnow was here. I spoke to him from outside, but he left quite suddenly. Oh, you mean he made a getaway down the back stairs? That's right. The apartment is exactly like Casper's was. The only things that appear to be missing are clothing, shaving tackle, and his toothbrush. <laughs> John Steed had parked his car outside Casper's block of flats. He looked up at the lighted windows and waited. The next light to go would almost surely be Casper's. But Roy Casper avoided the main rooms and went straight to the kitchen at the back of his apartment. There, he bent down near the sink and picked up a wicker basket. He placed it on the kitchen table and opened it. There. There. Come along, my pretty one. Come along. He held the pigeon very tenderly and moved quickly to the kitchen window, throwing it open. Casper leaned out of the window and released the pigeon. Its wings flapped loudly. It took to the air above the chimney tops and vanished into the night. In a small, darkened room many miles away in a country house, Charles Minnow staggered backwards and forwards, his hands over his ears, the sweat running down his face, for the room reverberated with ear-piercing shrieks coming from huge tannoy speakers. Stop it! Stop it! Stop it! The door opened, and Colonel Mannering came in. Which is worse, Minnow? You know? Sound? Or not knowing when the sound will begin again. Oh, please, please. Now become your own torturer. When your brain keeps asking, when will it start again? You steel yourself against the moment, tense every nerve. But the sound doesn't come. And then, suddenly... Ah! No! It's the psychological approach. Sergeant Blackie and others do not entirely approve. They place more faith in the older, more physical methods. But I can't condemn them out of hand now, can I? Not without allowing the sergeant to prove his point first. Excuse me, sir. Ah, Blackie. We were just discussing you and your methods. No, a word with you. Uh, a private, please, Colonel. Oh, very well. Take a breather, you know. And a good think. Remember, unless you tell us everything we want to know, this is only the beginning. I shall be back. Very shortly. Well, Blackie, what is it? I think you ought to see this, sir. Blackie opened his enormous hands. There was the pigeon. When did it arrive? A few minutes ago, sir. It's Casper's pigeon, isn't it? Roy Casper? That's right. Trouble. You'd uh, better get back to town at once. I'll allow you an hour to then phone him. We can't allow this to continue, Blackie. Of course not. You want me to... With your customary skill? Yes. And so the evening passed. 
Steed keeping a careful watch upon Casper's apartment and reporting occasionally to Mother. All quiet on the Casper front at the moment, Mother. Good. Don't want to keep you up all night, Steed. But sometime that boy is going to get in touch with them. I know. How about Minnow? Did Mrs. Peel manage to get him? Uh, we've run into a small problem there, too. Problem? Uh, Mrs. Peel will deal with it. Don't worry. Stick with Casper. Right. Good night, Mother. Good night. <laughs> Impossible. <laughs> Roy Casper speaking. Casper, Colonel Mannering here. Message received. Oh, thank goodness you've called, Colonel. Everything's gone wrong. A contact's been murdered and I've been held and interrogated. They think it's me. I've been questioned for hours and I, I didn't know how much to tell them. I, I, I don't know what to do. Calm down, calm down, Lieutenant Casper. That's an order. They didn't get anything out of you. You were paid by orders exactly. Uh, exactly. I didn't tell them anything about you or the organization. Then there's nothing to worry about. I've done a splendid job. I'll contact the proper authorities right away. I'll clear you absolutely. There'll be no more questions. Now listen. But while Colonel Mannering was reassuring Casper, a figure was creeping silently up the fire escape outside. It was Sergeant Blackie, and in his right hand he held a revolver. Mother was right. The night wasn't going to be a good one. Avengers. Listen every evening, Monday to Friday, to John Steed and Emma Peel, The Avengers. Brought to you by the makers of Coldwater Omo.